In the name of the 
In the name of Jesus, we call the power. In the name of the Lord, no Satan rages. We cannot be defeated. Thank you for yet another opportunity to be reminded that in spite of the challenges of our time, the battles that are raging, the storms and the winds of our time, that there is hope. We thank you, Father, because our victory is in Christ Jesus. And we shall not be afraid of anything. We shall not be afraid of any situation. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We pray that today you will speak to our very hearts. You will prepare us for the battles ahead and reassure us with the victory that you have promised in Jesus' name. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome you all to the worship service today in Jesus' name. And as you must have seen in the uh, teachings, the summaries, the choir ministration, that your victory is certain. I say your victory is certain. The God we are serving is the God of battle. And he will fight the battles of your life for you in Jesus' name. For you to think you have no battle is for you to deceive yourself. For you to think that the enemy is not there is for you to be living uh, in denial. There is no human being that does not have an enemy. And there is nobody born of woman that is not the target of the wicked one. But in the name of the Lord, for those of us that have partnered with Christ Jesus, for those of us that have surrendered our lives unto him, victory is sure in Jesus' name. Now, we are going to be looking at the message titled, Spiritual Warfare in the Last Days. Shall we all say that? One more time. Spiritual warfare in the last days. The Bible actually tells us that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. And these are those days that the Bible spoke about. But in the name of the Lord, we will not perish. By the power of the Lord, we will not perish in Jesus' name. The warfare today is in a way different from the warfare in the time past because it's a new age it's a new day and a lot of new inventions have come up and the enemy of our soul is also inventing different and diverse ways of, of attacking the church of god the people of god the believers of our time and that is why we need to understand the clear difference between a battle and a warfare. The difference between a battle and a warfare. The Bible says 
in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through to 18. Ephesians, open your Bible, chapter 6, verses 1 through to 18. Over there, I know many of us will know it already, but let's read it together. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That word wiles. It's talking about the strategies of the devil. It's talking about the devices of the devil. Wise. It's talking about the manipulations of the enemy. It's talking about the onslaught of the wicked. So that we will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand, you will stand. Stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench, how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always. Wait. What's the next statement? All prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So here we see the Apostle Paul reminding us of the primary duty of every believer, reminding us of our involvement in this battle and that you cannot fold our arms. We cannot just say, well, well, because God is watching over me, there is nothing for me to do. There is quite a lot of things for you to do. The Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You find that in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. He says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt, not, uh, shalt be no priest to me. See, thou hast forgotten the Lord of thy God. I will also forget thy children. I will also forget thy children. Now, we see here, the Lord is telling us, when we fail in that which we ought to know, when we fail in that which we ought to do, then we become a subject to the attacks and the onslaught of the wicked one. Now, I told you earlier on that there is a difference between warfare and a battle. What is a battle? What is warfare? A war generally consists of many battles that last much longer than a battle. That is, war comprises of different battles at different times in different ways. When we talk about warfare, warfare is a state of hostility. Warfare is not something that just happens once and stop. It is something that is ongoing. And that is why the Bible tells us that we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers invisible forces and powers of darkness are those that we are fighting against. That is why the Bible is telling us to stand. The Bible is telling us to be prepared. To telling us to always be equipped and ready for anything that the enemy might want to do. On the other hand, battle is a war, a smaller war, small scale war, that happens now and ends. Often time, battle ends faster than war. Battle is just a one-time thing, and then who is the winner, who is the loser, you know that, and then the winner takes the glory. The loser takes the shame. But warfare is not like that. In warfare, neither party gives up at all. 
no matter the outcome of this battle, they re engage themselves again. They counter themselves again. And it is ongoing, ongoing. Only God himself knows when the end will come to such a thing or an environment or a situation. But in the name of the Lord, every battle you are going through, the Lord will bring an end to it. In Jesus' name, for better understanding of battle, different from war. If you look at your Bible, you will understand that there was a persistent warfare between the Israelites and the Palestinians. Do you remember? And even though they fought a war, they ended, no matter who is the king that is coming up, the war is ongoing. That was not just a mere battle. It is a warfare going on. It doesn't just have an end. And even though the Bible was written thousands of years ago, pay attention here, the warfare between the Palestinians and the Israelis, is it over? Is still ongoing till this moment. That is what I'm talking about. Warfare. Not that alone. When you look at the warfare between the United States of America and Russia. Up till now. Even though there was a time there seems to be a, a slight cessation of the Cold War. That's why they call it war. Between the U.S. and Russia. Is it back on stage again, it's back on right now. And it's not just a war that the, you carry a uh, gun, I carry gun. You carry uh, uh, ammunition, I carry ammunition. Yes, there are ammunition, but in different and diverse ways. The battle is still raging between the two nations, uh, looking for who is more superior, looking for who is going to have the upper hand. And if you are very, very conversant with the uh, situation of things, you know, the United States is so concerned right now that the, cyber, the kind of cyber warfare that Russia is launching against the U.S., you, if you look at your news, read your news, you know that uh, they have hacked into some uh, government database in the country. Not just a political database. They are hacking into political database. They are hacking into individual database. People of interest hacking into everything. And not only that, the election, uh, the electoral uh, database of the nation, they have hacked into that in such a way that America is now concerned that this coming election, it is waiting for you to vote. It's another thing for somebody somewhere else to manipulate the figure and change everything you have done. It is because the warfare is going on. If you listen to news again, you will understand that America recently, in the last few weeks, have now diverted and shifted most emphasis from terrorism of all this Islamic extremism to the terrorism of cyber warfare. They said they are now concentrating more on Russia than these other people. That is what we are talking about. Now, if you look at China and Taiwan, the battle has been on for so many years. If you look at the North Koreans and the South Koreans, the battle has been on for so many years. If you look at the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, Amen. What are they friends? No. The battle has been on for so many years. Now come into re religion. Come into the Islamic uh, world. If you look at the Shiites and the Sunnis, you would think, yeah, they are Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. No, they are not all Muslims. Now come into the Christendom. The same thing is happening. The Pentecostal and the Evangelical. The Evangelical and the Orthodox churches. The warfare is just everywhere. I said all those to let you know that the devil, the enemy of your soul, has not given up. He's fighting, even though you overcame before, and you thought, oh, hooray, it is all over. Yeah, for that moment, for that period of time, it is not over until we get to glory. 
and the Lord himself will keep us all true to glory in Jesus' name. There are all kinds of warfare. In, let's go from the known to the unknown. All kinds of warfare in our world today. You know, uh, back in Africa, there is something they call the guerrilla warfare. Uh, that one, you don't know who you are fighting. And, uh, but they are there. You are fighting them. They are fighting you. It is whoever you are able to catch. Uh, they are enemies. They dress. They come to you, talk to you nicely. Not know that they are looking for an occasion to hack you down, to destroy your life. Guerrilla warfare. Now we have uh, the military type of warfare also. The area warfare. The airborne warfare. Biological warfare. Biological warfare. That one is also there. Just looking at the normal warfare of the world. How about the chemical warfare? And that is why when there is war between some nations, the United Nations, they start monitoring. They start watching. And they start shouting and making noise. You must not use biological warfare. You must not use chemical warfare. Because all those could be more destructive than gun and, uh, and bomb. That is why they don't want all those. Now, if you understand, you understand very well that in the recent time, there is another kind of warfare America in collaboration with Europe has been using against Russia, and that is called economic warfare. So that they want to collapse the economy of Russia and uh, bring them to their nail, and they are also struggling at every way, in any, every way, to ensure that they survive. In the name of Jesus, you will survive. And then there is this terrible, terrifying, destructive warfare for our time that everybody is dreading. Nobody wants anybody to use it, even though different nations have it. And any nation that is now trying to get it, they want to work against them from getting it. And that is called the nuclear warfare. The nuclear warfare. And then, of course, you know, there is psychological warfare out there, too. Christian soldiers need to, under, to understand that just like the nations of the world are using different strategies, wiles, and attacks against one another, the enemy of your soul is also strategizing. In the time past, it is just persecution we see in the church. This time around is much more than persecution. The enemy is attacking physically, he's attacking spiritually. But in Jesus' name, we will overcome. Let's look at the first point, spiritual warfare of Christian soldiers. Now understand that the very day you gave your life to Christ Jesus, you become a member of the army of the Lord. You are a soldier. So you cannot say, I don't want to fight. Whether you want to fight or not, the enemy wants to fight you. Whether you are prepared or not, the enemy wants to, is targeting you. But they will fail in Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. We look at it from verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. And you, Hati Quicken, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wearing in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of where? Of the air. The spirit that now walketh where? In the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversations in time past. In the loss of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And where by nature the children of wrath, Even as others. But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We see here that the enemy uses the warfare of sin. The warfare of transgression. The strategy of iniquity against the Christians. Look at verse 2 again. We are in time past. You walk according to the cause. The pattern. The manner. The, the, the desire of this world. According to the praise of the power of the air. 
the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Now, understand again that every human being is under the control of one spirit or the other. Understand again that the devil was cast out of heaven into the world. And when he was cast out, there was a statement from glory from heaven that woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Because Satan, your enemy, my enemy, has come into the world happily, joyfully. How? With rage. With anger. With determination to take vengeance upon all those that want to serve the Lord. And so, he is trying to control everybody. The mind of everybody, the action of everybody, the attitude everybody of everybody, the character of everybody, the dressing of everybody, wanting you to do contrary to the will, the plan, and the purpose of God. But in the name of the Lord, as a child of God, you will prevail. You will not be ruled by the forces and powers of darkness in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 12. I look at it from verse 7 through to 13. Revelation chapter 12. From verse 7. It says over there. And there was war in heaven. Pay attention here. If there was war in heaven, you think there would be no war on earth. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And uh, what's the next statement? I can't hear somebody. Can you say it as if you mean it? Prevail not. In your life, he will fail again. He will not prevail against you. He will not prevail against your family. He will not prevail against your finances. He will not prevail against your children in Jesus' name. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Now, he fought in heaven. And there was no place for him in your life. One more time. No more place for the devil. In the name of Jesus. So the Bible says no more place for him. And then what verse are we right now? Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. The devil in your life, what's going to happen to him? In your family? In your business? In your career? In our church, cast out. Somebody shout, cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God. How awful. Now you see, it's, it's not something it does at one time and then stop. No, it's an ongoing chain. And verse 11, and they overcame him. Who are the people? Who are the people? And why don't you turn, to, uh, you turn that to, and we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony in the name of Jesus. And they love not their lives unto the day. Please understand. The things that charms us the things that attract us, most of the time, are the strategic onslaught of the enemy against us. The Bible says, and they love not their lives unto death. It means you look up unto heaven, you pay your attention unto God. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. If you Therefore, be risen with Christ Jesus. Seek those things which are above and not the things that are here on the earth. Verse 12. Therefore, rejoice. What are you telling somebody next to you? Can you tell the person, let me hear you? Can you tell another person, let me see you? Rejoice, ye heavens. Rejoice, you saints. 
Rejoice, you children of the living God, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, the inhabitants of the earth that does not know God, that are not saved, that are not redeemed from their sin, that are not washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. That's why he's fighting relentlessly at this time. That's why I said spiritual warfare in the last days. The way Ramana is fighting today is different from the way he did in the past. But, in the name of our captain, Jesus Christ, we are victorious. I said we are victorious. The devil stirred up rebellion and war in heaven before being cast into the world. Thereby bringing war, war and worry to the inhabitants of the earth. The prince of the power of the air was out of heaven into the earth to fight the children of God here. This prince of the power of the air is called the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, Satan. Every of those names fits him. He's good for nothing. What did I just say? He's good for nothing. The battle today is more fierce and pronounced than ever before. Because of the nearness of the coming, he hates good. He does evil at all times. He hates the believers in particular. He hates anything and everything that was made by God. Every believer there needs to understand that we are in the battlefield. We are in the war front. There is no room for carelessness. There is no room for laziness. There is no room for procrastination. There is no room for faithlessness. We must be prepared. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When the enemy tries to attack, part of his activities and his operations includes turning man against his creator. Anytime you are tempted to sin, the enemy is at hand. Christians seek not yet repose. Hear as thy angels say, in the midst of foes thou art. Do what? Watch and pray. The enemy uses delay and hindrances in the lives of sinners, thinking I will get saved by and by, only to realize it too late that salvation door is closed against them. Every hardness of heart in the lives of people the Lord will destroy in Jesus' name. He blinds the mind of men against the gospel of salvation. He strategically positions evil agents to hinder the work of God. Those of you that are into evangelism, serving the Lord, don't you see how hard and how difficult it is? To get a single soul saved. And even after that soul is saved. For them to continue is another challenge. Because the warfare is ongoing from time to time. He provokes and manipulates. He attacks and accuses the faithful saints of God. He provokes. He manipulates. He attacks. He accuses you before God. Before God, any little thing, and you say, God, don't you see? He said it's your child. He said he's born again. He said it's a Christian. That is why you have to watch over your life. Watch over your life. He causes sickness. He causes diseases. He causes crisis in the family. He causes poverty, barrenness, stagnation, all kinds of things he uses to accomplish his goal in your life. He fights against the progress of the church. He fights against planting of churches. He fights against the growth and the development of churches. He allows some sin to happen in the church in such a way that unbelievers will say, is that not a place you call a holiness place? It's part of the strategy of the enemy. So, if care is not taken, you that you are already in the fold, you will say, ah, if that person in the church can do this, if that person can do that, then where then can we go? And then you want to 
jump out. You better jump, don't jump out. Tell somebody don't jump out. Because the enemy has actually set a stage to deceive you, to distract you, to deter you, and to destroy you. But again, he will fail in Jesus' name. He uses demonic attack. Even those that says they are born again. If you feel well, everything is fine, praise God. But pay attention here. If the Bible says we war not against flesh and blood, we war not against flesh and blood. Demonic afflictions are there. Demonic oppressions are there. Demonic attacks are there. It says we war. We war against principalities and powers. Who are the people warring? They are the saints of God. They are the believers in Christ Jesus. They are those that are redeemed by grace. Washed by the blood of Jesus. Called by the name of the Lord. We war not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. And spiritual wickedness. Where are they? In high places. They attack you in the daytime. They attack you in the night time. That is why you don't want to take anything for granted. You want to pray at all time. You don't want to allow sin of any kind in your life. Pride in any way. Carelessness in any form. Procrastination and delay. You don't want to so much concentrate on the secular at the expense of your spirituality. Who is this devil? He is a deceiver. He deceived Adam and Eve. He deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 and 5. Not only that, he is a distractor. He tried to use Shambhalat and uh, Tobiah and Jeshem to distract Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 6, looking at it from verses 1 to 15, he is a discourager, if there is any word like discourager. He discourages people. Don't you understand? As strong and powerful as Elijah was. The serpent, devil, dragon, the evil one, penetrated into Elijah and deceived him. If Elijah could confront, confront hundreds of the prophets of Baal, if Elijah could confront the, the, the king of the land, Ahab, now Mrs. Ahab, Jezebel, said, so be to me. If I don't do this to you that predict to the prophet by this time tomorrow, and just like that, instead of this man of God declaring in the name of the Lord, he ran for his life. Discouragement. Discouragement. I pray you will overcome it in Jesus' name. He's a destroyer. Destroyer. John 10, 10, the thief comment number for to steal to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it. How? More abundantly. More abundantly. The devil wants to damn your soul. He wants to defeat you. He wants to create doubt in you so that you will not believe God. That's exactly what he did with Eve. Has God said, when you begin to doubt the word of God, the promises of God, the authenticity of the scripture, the reality of the existence of God. Something is happening. The enemy is targeting your soul. There is a particular person not too long ago here in this church, a worker in the church, the enemy attacked this individual. And one time was telling me, and then she said, I don't even know if God actually exists. I don't actually know if the word of God is real. A worker in the church was attacked. But praise God, prayer was made. Because we knew that this is not ordinary. We knew the life of this individual. The progress of this individual. And we knew there is a warfare going on. And to the glory of God, the person is back in the faith. You will not fail. You will not fall. In the name of Jesus. 
he told Jesus, even Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, if thou be the Son of God, turn this stone to bread. The enemy will want to try you in different ways. Just be prepared. He uses, some of the things he uses, he uses dissension, dissension, disagreement. He uses opposition. Don't you see members in the choir? Before they got enlisted, they wanted to serve God. Ushering department, they wanted to serve God. Children, worker, they wanted to serve God. But when this enemy comes, and he comes in a very subtle way, subtle way, and then he turns A against B, he turns B against A, and then use your word against you. And before you know it, there is crisis and commotion in the, in the department, even in the church as a body. And at other times, he comes to you and say, you are from this part, they are from the other part, and then, you know, pay attention here. Have you ever seen any human being, look up at me, that is going on the road and the head will not shake? Have you ever seen that? Except you are a zombie. Somebody say amen. Even as I'm talking, I can see some of you, you're even, uh, even though you are seated, your head is even shaking. Praise God. Listen to this. All it takes is for you to look for a fault. You will find it. Are you listening to me? But if you are looking for good, will you find it? You will also find it. It depends. Ask your neighbor, what are you looking for? I can't hear you. Tell him, what are you looking for in me? The good in me or the bad in me? Amen. And they didn't talk this way. Who knows how to talk better? You? Oh, if we're looking for efforts in your speech, if, even as I started preaching now, don't you know, if you, have, if you have another spirit, you already can pick so many faults in my preaching right now. But if you are looking for the good of this message, you will pick the best of it all. Amen? Don't you understand that many a times when a minister ministers and pray, people get healed. Miracle happen. It is not just because of the power in the minister, but also the state of the mind of the people that are hearing. How are you receiving it? If you think, don't mind, your mind will not be there. But the other person receives with joy, receives with faith, receives with happiness, and then the miracle happen. Don't you know even Jesus? went to his own people, and the Bible says he couldn't do much miracle. For what reason? Because of their unbelief. And yet, he got to some other areas, and the miracle galore is coming to somebody. The enemy uses distortion. He uses distortion. He uses falsehood. That's distortion. False teaching and false doctrine. And we have all those in many, many places out there. And such are places that many people like to go. Because it's one of the broad, broad ways. Can you imagine somebody say, once saved, forever saved. Who told you that? When the Bible said, the soul that sin it, it shall die. He uses distortion. He uses dilemma. Problems in people's lives. Predicaments in people's lives. Challenges in people's lives. He uses it to turn them again. These are part of the weapons of the enemy. I told you earlier on, he uses diseases, sicknesses. And that is why Mrs. Joe went to the husband and said, Curse God and die. Thank God for you. And uh, in time to come, we thank God for you. Because whatever the sickness of the, or the disease you are having right now is for a short period of time. It will while away. You will have your life. I say you will have your life in the name of Jesus. I told you he uses demonic attack. He uses divinations and death. He uses denial. Denial. You are praying for a miracle in your life. You are praying for a need in your life. 
and you can't get it. You can't get it on time. Listen, it's because the enemy is standing in between. Remember, Daniel prayed. And the Bible says, from the very first day he began to pray, what happened? The answer was given. The answer was given. Don't just want to say, God has answered your prayer. You are not saying it as if you are sure, you are sure of what you are talking about. You are not saying it with confidence. You are not saying it with joy. God has answered your prayer. I declare God has answered your prayer. In the name of the Lord, God has answered your prayer. And very soon you will see the manifestation in Jesus' name. God already answered the prayer of Daniel. God already sent the answer down. But the enemy saw the answer coming, went in between, and stood between the answer and Daniel. But thank God for Daniel. Daniel will not give up. And you will not give up. In the name of Jesus, you will not give up. No matter the situation, you will not give up in Jesus' name. At the end of the day, because Daniel will not quit, reinforcement came from heaven. On your behalf, reinforcement is coming. God had to send the most of all the powerful angels in heaven, Michael, and then he came and dealt a blow to the devil. It's going to happen again. Even in this church, it's going to happen in Jesus' name. Even after Moses was dead, the devil will still not give up. Pay attention. You know some ignorant people, I told you, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People think, well, death is the end of everything. Even after death, he's still fighting for your soul. For your soul. Even though God so much honored Moses, that he did not allow any human being to touch his body. He handled the funeral of Moses himself. The devil still went and wanted to collect the body of Moses. And even after his death, there was still battle. Amen? There was still battle until the angel again came and said, God rebuke you. In your life, God rebukes the devil. In your situation, God rebukes the devil in Jesus' name. Death is not the end of everything. Please pay attention. Whether you're a believer or a non-believer, death is not the end. It's just a change of a face. Look at Elisha. Elisha was dead. But the power of God was still resident in Elijah. In his graveyard, even though, pay attention here, these are mysteries of life. Even though his body was rotten, and it was just the bone, when a dead man going to be buried was thrown into that pit, and his body touched the body of Elijah, what happened to him? He came back to life. Tell your neighbor, you are powerful. That's what the members of the choir have told us. We've got the power. We've got the power. Unfortunately, many of us don't realize it. And we don't use it. And we are living, acting, and behaving as if we are nobody. In the name of the Lord, I am somebody. By the power of the Lord, I will be victorious. Over all the challenges and the battles of life in Jesus' name. I am not a victim. I am a victor. Who are you? And so you are in Jesus' name. The devil uses dissociation. He lies to cut people off. When it causes division, it causes detachment, he separates you so that he can attack you more. Time will not permit me to tell you of stories 
situations where the devil will just deceive people, take them out of under their covering, take them out of under the umbrella, and then begin to haul his missile at them. Before they know it, usually it is too late. You know, there are other times you just don't realize it. You see some people, they have no time for God. He uses the religion. What I mean by the religion is negligence. Negligence. Carelessness. Recklessness. You see somebody who's supposed to be active, vibrant, effective in the things of God. Oh, he's dull. He's dormant. He's inactive. You try to push. They will always, uh, always have an excuse. Always have a reason. Somebody is always responsible for their failures, for their inactiveness, for their dormancy. It's an attack of the enemy on your life so that you will never be blessed. But we reverse that today in Jesus' name. So, make up your mind that for as long as you live, you will serve the Lord. With all your strength, with all your might, with all the grace of God in you, in Jesus' name. He uses failure in people's lives. He can use your family. He can use your friend. He can use your foe. Anything the devil chooses to use, the Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. This is just the first point of the message. We'll continue next Sunday. Rise up as we go to the Lord in prayer. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. The first thing you want to do is to examine yourself. Where am I spiritually? Where am I spiritually? Am I born again at all? If you are living an inconsistent life, I expect everybody to be on their feet at this time. It's an attack of the enemy. It's not that you don't know the truth. It's not that you don't hear the word of God. But the enemy just don't want you to live a holy life, a righteous life, a pure life. But you are, today you are going to say in the name of Jesus, I am going through. By the power of the Lord, I'm living above sin, above trespasses, above iniquity, above transgression. Examine yourself, examine your life. What attack has the enemy sent unto you to diminish your life, to disorganize your life, to destroy your life? Today is your day. I am going through. In the name of Jesus, repent of everything. Begin to pray today. Any attack of the enemy against my life, I cancel them right now. From my position in Christ Jesus, I cancel them right now. I cancel the forces of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever he has used, Whatever he is using, tell the Lord to destroy them. In the name of Jesus. He succeeded with if he will not succeed with you. By the power of the Lord. Nehemiah overcame. He never allowed himself to be distracted. Despite all the effort of Shambhala, Tobiah, and uh, Jeshem. Elijah eventually overcame. After a moment of discouragement, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Even when the people around him were discouragement unto him. Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. Declare today. The storm and the wind will obey my voice. In my life, peace will be still. In my situation, peace will be still. In my family, peace will be still. In the name of Jesus.
Every provocation in your life you will overcome. Every manipulation of the enemy you will overcome. Never allow yourself to be deceived. In Christ Jesus, you cannot be defeated. Get over the doubts. Identify the falsehood of the enemy, the, 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 the distortions. He uses accidents in the lives of people. He uses pestilence. The Bible says pray with all prayers. With all prayers. With all prayers. Whatever way you can pray to get over any and every dilemma in your life. Any and every problem in your life. Pray. Let no disease. Let no demon. Let no divination of the enemy take faith away from you. Understand that delay is not denial. Tough times never last, but tough people do. If in your mind you have been disconnected from the brethren, it's an attack of the enemy against you. Two cannot work together except they are one. If the two of you shall agree together as such in anything, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. The enemy wants you to live alone. Walk alone. Act alone. So you can suffer alone. Make up your mind today. Reconnect with your brethren. Reconnect with the church. And the Lord will help you. Is there carelessness in your life? Negligence in your life? You can overcome. You can overcome. You can overcome. You can overcome. Wake up. Wake up. Careless soul, wake up. Put on your armor. Put on your armor. Any crisis in your family as a believer is an attack of the enemy. Identify the enemy. Never cooperate with the devil. Never cooperate with the wicked one. He's working against your unity. Working against your oneness. Working against your progress. Because if the two of you, husband and wife, will agree together, he knows he's defeated. Is there any delay in your life? Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't give up because of that. Hold on to the Lord. Jesus never failed. Jesus never failed. Jesus never failed. The man of the world may let you down. Jesus never failed. You can turn the table around today. You can turn the table around today. You can turn the table around today. By the power of your prayer. By the power of prayer. That is our weapon. That is our weapon.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's sing this song before we say the final prayer. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. Sing it with all your heart as if you believe. And let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory shall be mine. It shall be mine. You are making a declaration that from this moment, victory will be yours. All those struggles, spiritual, physical, financial, health struggle, that victory will be yours today. It shall be mine. Victory shall be mine. Spiritually, physically, financially, in every area of my life, One more time. Victory, victory shall be mine. You are making a declaration unto the Lord that all my battles, I'm leaving them at your feet, Lord. All my struggles, I'm giving them up unto you. No, this, no struggle of life, no sickness, no disease will make me to lose my faith in you. I believe in you, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. Because you have spoken good concerning me, concerning my family. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believeth, that shall be the performance of the things which the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Lord, you have spoken victory concerning me. You have spoken victory concerning my family. And I declare that it shall be mine this morning. I declare that it shall be mine this morning. I declare that I shall be mine this morning. I'm holding my peace. I'm holding my peace. I'm standing still, Lord, so that you will fight my battle for me. Amen. Amen. Father, as we have declared with our mouth, Lord, that victory will be ours. Every battle in our life, every spiritual warfare, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will give us victories in Jesus' name. Father, as we have declared this morning, so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything in our lives, spiritually, physically, financially, that is making us to lose our sleep. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that all those situations, you will turn them around for our good in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace not to lose our weapon, which is purity. Lord, give unto us in Jesus' name. Every day of our life, when we wake up, when we go to sleep, Father, keep us pure in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you will give us the soundness of mind, Lord. Anywhere we find ourselves, anytime we find ourselves, you will, have, will give us the peace that passes human understanding, that passes the peace that this world can offer, the peace that will make us to know that in every situation you are there for us. Nothing will move us again. We will not stagger at your promises again through unbelief in the mighty name of Jesus. But we will strong in faith, giving thanks always. Because we know, Lord, you are more than able, Lord. I say you are more than able, Lord, to carry us through in Jesus' name. And you will carry us through in the mighty name of Jesus. You will carry us through in the name of Jesus. Every situation of our life, Father, you will turn them around. They will become stories in the mighty name of Jesus. Every test, Lord, you will turn them to testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Every shame, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, you will turn them to fame in our life in Jesus' name. We will be who you want us to be through your power, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is weighing us down. Father, the man of God has declared your word unto us. Father, they will be rolled away today in Jesus' name. Father, we are free and free indeed. I said we are free and free indeed. We declare our freedom today. Devil, wherever you are, your host, we declare our freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Spiritually, we are free. 
Financially, we are free. In our careers, we are free. Academically, we are free. In our body, in our health, we are free. In the mighty name of Jesus, every chains are broken. Every chains are broken. Every chains are broken. Every chains are broken. Every everlasting doors are lifted up loud. Every everlasting doors are lifted up loud. And the King of glory will be manifested in our life. The King of glory will be manifested in our situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be, Lord. Our joy will always be full, Lord. In the name of Jesus. As we are going into a new week, Lord, Father, we know situations will always come. But you have given us assurance that even before they come, you have already overcome for us. Father, let that assurance always be with us in the name of Jesus. No more crying. No more weeping. Joy in the Lord always in the mighty name of Jesus. That will be our portion. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Give the Lord a round of applause.